How's it going, Viola Gang? I'm James, and my viola is getting fixed up at an instrument shop right now. But as always, I still have a ton of music I need to work on. So today, I'm going to take you through my favorite ways to practice without my instrument. These are best done somewhere quiet where you won't get distracted. But I find myself doing the most often on public transportation, in my classes, or even while I'm out jogging. Number one, mental practice. A lot of people think I'm joking when I tell them that I actually mentally practice, but it's a real thing. To do this, I imagine that I'm playing viola and try to hear a piece in my head. The notes that I can't hear clearly are the ones I know I need to work on. Sometimes physical difficulties can affect or get in the way of your musicality. For example, if you struggle with bow distribution, you might do a decrescendo on a long note. Without worrying about the burden of technique, practicing mentally can actually help you figure out some of your musical ideas better. This is my go-to way of passing time when I'm waiting in line or doing something that takes a long time that I don't need to concentrate on, like jogging. Number two finger tapping. This is basically the same thing as mental practice except you tap out the fingerings for your instruments on another object. I often use my glasses case since it's similar to the size of my viola's neck, but other times I just use my hand. If you're doing this in public, people might think you're a little bit insane, but if you're a music major like me, then that's not that far from the truth anyways. Number three, singing. My voice is so horrendous that I didn't even make my 8th grade talent show for my rendition of Shut Up and Dance With Me. But whatever your vocal ability, trying to sing a piece you're working on can really help to develop your ear, and bonus points if you can conduct along with it. Number four, listening. Listening is probably the best way to learn any piece of music. I try to listen to the pieces I'm working on as much as possible. The great thing about this is you can listen to music while doing just about anything else. Even if you're not actively listening, it's still going to help. So if you're like me and you spend a lot of time playing Minecraft, you can spend a lot of time playing Minecraft and listening to music although I personally wouldn't count this towards my practice hours. If you find a recording that you really like and listen to it enough times that you can hear it in your head, it gives you a certain sound to aim for when you go to play it yourself. Number five, score studying. The only thing better than listening is listening while actively following along with the score. You'll absorb more information and gain a really complete understanding of how your part fits in with other parts in a piece. Number six, marking your part. My handwriting is significantly worse on a music stand than it is on a desk, and sometimes I'm lazy about writing in the bowings and fingerings that I eventually decide on. It really helps me to go through my part and focus on neatly writing in everything I need to remember away from playing. Number seven, theoretical analysis. In the same vein as putting in markings, it really helps me for any piece, but especially for an accompanied Bach, to go through and write in the Roman numerals for each chord as well as analyzing the form. This simplifies the piece and makes it way easier to memorize. It can also help you figure out things like where you're going to use expressive intonation, as well as how you're going to choose your phrasing. Number eight, artistic interpretation. I've been into creative writing for most of my life, especially poetry and song lyrics. Sometimes I make up lyrics that go with the piece I'm working on, or I write a short story or poem about the piece. Later on, when I go to play it, I can think of a line or scene at different points, and it adds a lot to the emotion. I'm not that great at visual arts, but if you were into sketching or painting, I'm sure that would do a similar thing for you. Those are all the strategies I use to practice when I can't physically play my instruments. Unfortunately for you, now that you've seen this video, not having your instrument is no longer an excuse to not practice. So, sorry about that, and I hope you enjoyed the video anyways. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more Viola content. Until next time, Viola Gang, Viola King, out.